We want millions of people to be saved in America. You know, the revival in America, I believe, did not begin at Asbury University. I believe that is a critical and a key part of it. I believe that there is a clue to the moment that it began. In the book of Kings, chapter 1 Kings 18, where Elijah was about to ask fire to fall on the sacrifice, and he said in prayer to God, let them know that I have done these things at your word and that you are turning their hearts back to you. So now I want to ask you a question. Does God have the power to turn hearts? Does he? You may feel safe in your atheism, but God has the power to turn your heart. For thousands of years, mankind has tried to explain the Jesus effect. Why does a wife-beating alcoholic become a model citizen and get off of alcohol in one step instead of 12? Why is the question of race instantly answered? When a person is transformed by Christ, it isn't a matter that they accept other colors. They don't even see them anymore. The last thing they know about you is your color. Women's rights, you don't believe in them if you leave Jesus out of the talk. If you have a TED talk and you talk about equality and you don't bring up Christ, you're a fake. You don't mean it if you want society cured and you're not talking about Jesus. You don't mean it if you want crime to go away. If you want poverty to be erased, you are always going to deal with the carpenter from Nazareth every single time. Because he's the only one. Help me preach a little bit. He's the only one. Tonight's sermon, which I'm going to begin in a few minutes, is going to target two groups of people. And I'm going to describe them in a little while. God is targeting you tonight. The first is the frustrated Christian. All over America, there are Christians who are suddenly frustrated. And they can't explain their frustration. Some of them are losing sleep. Some of them have trouble getting a thought off their mind. When did the revival begin? Because of God's power to turn hearts, listen to me. Because of his power to turn hearts, it began on January the 2nd, not at Asbury University. It began on an NFL football field when Damon Hamlin fell over with a heart attack. And when he, his heart stopped beating, America held its breath. Instantly, prayer was legal again in the NFL. I need your help right now. I'm trying to preach up here. It's the truth. A hush came over the country. A moment before that heart attack, that game between the Bengals and the Bills was life and death. Now it didn't matter. Nothing mattered. America was stunned silent. Did he give that man a heart attack? No, he did not. Did he take advantage of his heart attack? You better believe it. The Bible says all things work together for good to them who are called of God. Somebody help me preach here because I'm, I'm really working with you. It's the truth. That's where it started. God stepped out of eternity looked at America and said, I have the power to make you pray when you don't even believe in prayer. 
I have the power to stop your ball games, to interrupt your agenda, to make it no longer about being woke or being this or that, or trying to look at race or look at the alphabet people as I call them. Suddenly it became about God and they couldn't explain it. There were thousands of heart attacks in America that same moment. But for some reason, this captured us. And it was God warning us. Then it moved to a little college in Kentucky. Then two weeks later, a movie comes out called The Jesus Revolution. And Hollywood can't explain it. What's going on right here? I had a young person on a come up to me and say what's going on I said you're not old enough to remember but I remember when the beaches of Southern California had turned into mass baptismal services I remember when University of California at Berkeley couldn't believe what God was doing and all over America and it's happening again somebody get excited We are about to take delivery on a new tent. When we got this one, we thought, I wonder if we'll ever fill it. <laughs> we've only had one service in the entire time we've owned this tent where it wasn't full. One time. The rest of the time, it's been overflow. Every city we take it to, we always have to add chairs. We had to, while we were in New York, we had to buy 2,000 chairs. And ever since then, these people that work with me think I have a bottomless bank account. We need more lights. We need more chairs. We need a higher stack of speakers. And the need is that we're growing. We're exploding. And here you know, we, we go to where the hurt is in Jesus' name. And let me tell you something. I'm going to be bold with you. One day, King Hezekiah, one day, King Hezekiah, the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 29, verse 8, it is in my heart to make a covenant with God that his wrath turn away from Israel. That's in Mario Morello's heart. I am going to tell you that I believe that God is not going to destroy America. He's going to save America. How many of you believe that over here? Do you believe it? All right. 